And good evening and welcome to Planet Herring. I'm Michael and this is... This is a one-off quick race. Uh, we're in iRacing 2020. Season, I, I think we're in, uh, see, we're in season one, uh, week four, I believe it is now. I haven't really done any of my official races yet so far this week. It's been pretty busy. Okay, I am absolutely going to have to stop him from doing that. I do not need to know everybody's fastest lap. At any rate, so we're doing this one-off. Uh, we actually have been doing quite a bit of stuff this week. Of course, this is the first week of the new year of 2020, so Happy New Year to you. I hope you had a good uh, holiday season. Of course, everybody's back to work, and of course, right here at Planet Herring, we are full tilt into the new year with a lot of new stuff. Actually spent uh, the better part of the day. Uh, working with my son Justin over on Serious Gamer 33, recording a completely new series um, that me and him are putting together jointly, a little father-son effort, and uh, wanted to do this one real quick just to make sure everything was going pretty well. This race actually starts in about uh, 10 minutes. And looks like everything is going good on my connection with the stream. And so what we're going to do now, uh, just do a few quick practice laps on, on the track. So this is the pickup truck. It is a rookie series. If you're, And I figured I would do this because I've done this quite a bit of times. Daytona is... One of the two tracks I believe they do here, Daytona and Talladega being the other one, it's one of those ones that's good for rookies, good for um, good for your average A or B class guy to get some some seat time with some of the fast ovals in the trucks. Trucks really aren't something that a lot of people do. Um, I'm actually running the regular NASCAR fixed class A series, so. Not a lot you can change all this, so really and truly what I like to do is I like to go with a higher ratio, so that brings us up to 14 to 1. Going to pull our steering offset up to 12. Uh, makes it a little bit easier to control. That is about it. That's going to be my two little tidbits there. Play with that, but uh, absolutely if you're having problems keeping it in a nice straight line down the straights or killing people in the turns because you can't keep it on the line, then that's probably why. So, go ahead. Uh, one of the things I like to do is make sure my field of view is good. One of the things I do have on my setup are uh, on the fly field of view and driver height, as well as your, I uh, think, the front back position which you can all set in your various settings. So 60 mile an hour speed limit here. One of the things that you absolutely should do is make sure that you are 100% manual, uh, unless you just do not have a clutch pedal. And even then you can actually map a button. But Definitely for certain, run this series with no aids because they do slow you down, believe it or not. The other thing that I will say is get a piece of software like the Z1 dashboards that I use uh, so you can monitor your temps, or temp, oil temp, both for when you're in the draft Whoopsie. Also, definitely make use of that spotter. And listen to them. Ooh. And he just missed me. Yep, gotta watch out for that. Get my foot in it. 
So realistically, the uh, driving on uh, Daytona, especially this uh, version, uh, which is incredibly bumpy, uh, you really need to have a nice light touch on the steering wheel. Uh, don't put a death grip on it because it will move back and forth. It makes it really hard to hold your line, especially in the turn. So nice light touch. That steering wheel is going to want to dance around. Fast lap around here, of course, is to be able to hug that low yellow line there. Just don't get too low. You want you don't want to get loose, especially when you're in the draft. Hopefully, we can catch somebody here and actually draft them here in a second. So we do have about uh, five minutes to get some practice laps in here. There are people going around the track, but not a lot of people in drafts. And that's only because I haven't had a draft now. There is a significant amount of time to be had with uh, NASCAR oval racing in the draft. Um, their qualifying times will usually be a good bit slower than any kind of the references you'll find from race pace. Don't worry about it. There's no way that you can, as a solitary car, go as fast as a pack can go. That's normal. So trying desperately, trying desperately to find someone that I can hook up with here, uh, going around by yourself in a lot of cases is fine just to get a feel for the car and maybe figure out how you're going to do qualifying, but uh, it's not really good practice. So uh, according to my Z1 dashboard track map, I do have some guys coming up behind me. So we're going to stay on the high line, give them some space. They haven't quite caught up just yet. They will here shortly. Also, this is actually some good practice too uh, that I would strongly recommend for anyone uh, who's New to oval racing, especially in NASCAR, is try going around on the high line of every track. Uh, you cannot uh, do well at these if you just practice the optimal line. NASCAR especially, you'll end up in packs of two or three wide and not be able to be in that perfect line. And you need to know what to do. All right, so here comes this pack behind me. Unfortunately, we got, uh, and there goes the pack behind me because of somebody who didn't really do what they needed to do. Um, if you're slow and you're on an oval like this, uh, some ovals, Low lines fast, other ovals, high lines fast, whatever the fast line is that the pack is in, uh, move. Get out of the way. You are you are you are you are a roving roadblock if you are a solitary car and a pack of cars is coming up on you and you are in the high well I should say you are in the fast line. Um, you're 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 just being rude. All right, well, here's somebody. Nope, there's not somebody. Okay, well, we still have not been successful finding someone to draft. Uh, largely thanks to the fact of that last pack uh, blowing up on me. 
which is quite possibly what's going to happen in the truck race. I, I, you know, I hate to say it, perfectly honest here. I don't quite understand what's going on there either. Okay, well, we, we have tried, and we have tried, and we have tried, and we are talking about, we are, so I'm going to go ahead and pull in here. All right. Oh, I ran right past it. Okay, so the qualifying session is ready to begin. So that's it for the practice session. We're going to flip right on over to the race session. And uh, this is just one of those extended ones that I think I'm going to be doing from now on. Do a little bit of practice. Flip right on over to the race and uh, see how that goes. Because I think that's uh, probably just a little bit more helpful in some cases than just hopping right into races sometimes. So... One little change to the format that I'm going to be making here for the new year is I'm going to try to include about 10, 15 minutes of practice, depending on the depending on the series and how much time I have, of course. And that way we can get a little bit more of those tips, tricks, and insights that everybody is wanting these days especially if you're getting started in i racing that's kind of the point of all this uh, is hopefully to relay some of my uh nearly well actually um more than a decade now of sim racing experience so all right so we are now in the practice session for the race itself uh of course um your pre-race Practice sessions are not directly going into the race. So let's see what we got here. We got a uh, good large field. That's easy enough. Uh, all of our entries are hmm, Division One guys. Okay. Uh, info on the race itself. We're talking uh, about 10 laps. So this is a, an extraordinarily short race there's really not anything to it uh, really what you get out of this is trying to drive in a pack without killing people and also practicing your qualifying technique uh, pretty much all of this is directly applicable to the higher nascar series so uh, don't think that it is useless definitely can pick up some technique and this one runs i think every hour so you just keep doing it and doing it and doing it between practice sessions and whatnot. So uh, I do another thing while we're getting ready to move over to qualifying here is I do run the wheel down in the 640 range. There really is no reason on a track like this. Uh, sometimes even lower depending on the track I'm running from NASCAR. Some of the tracks are very small and tight and there's a lot of turning. And it takes a lot of wheel, um, wheel movement to actually get the full grip off of the tires uh, depending on what track you're on so there's really no reason to have 900 degrees of wheel rotation so one of the tricks i do is i actually lower that down in this case 640 is applicable always make sure that your pedals are working everything seems to be good and of course no shift aids all right, so we are in qualifying now. So, of course, make sure every time you go in, let's go ahead and get our 14 to 1 steering ratio and then bring it on up to plus 12 on the steering offset. That's going to make your wheel cant to the right. But when you're on an oval, it's not really all that noticeable. And it also helps with the turning. Again, especially if you have an add-on to your wheel that uh, maybe connects with a cable or a USB or something, this will make it a lot easier to keep that from getting uh, messed up. So I'm going to go ahead and set my various gauges here. Uh, NASCAR starts with a full tank of fuel.
Okay, so with qualifying on an oval like Talladega or, in this case, Daytona, you're going to want to get as much speed built up as quickly as possible. So the key thing here is right out of the gate off of the pit exit, get as fast as you can go. Now, a lot of people will do a will do a high lap and a low lap. I haven't really noticed that make a difference for me. So I do two completely low right on the line as clean as possible laps. This is, doesn't matter if this is Talladega or Daytona. This is the way I do it. Uh, some people will push the boundary of that by going in below the line of the triovals on these guys and you know try to cut that little bit off to the line. I don't do that. I consider it cheating whether I racing does or not. That's up to you. Do what you want to do, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, so nice hugging the line. One of the big things you want to do is just be smooth. Uh, if you go in a little bit too high, don't crank the wheel and try to adjust too much. All you got to do is throw the car off and scrub off too much speed. But I've also, a lot of people like to do what they see uh, real world drivers do and, you know, track out to the edge and back in. That really, I, I haven't seen where that gained any any time so so again being smooth holding that line coming right off the turn staying right on the line uh, effectively what you're doing is taking the absolute shortest path around the track so as you can see we're a good uh, tenth and a half almost two tenths up uh, so we're just going to try to hold that there keep the foot all the way down All right, well. Go ahead and stop, and let's look at the times here. Now, the one thing you will notice is that unlike, is the unlike, uh, unlike road racing, the times here are going to be extraordinarily close. So as you can see, from first place all the way down to where I am now in 10th, um, we're basically talking about one tenth of a second. So one thing I am going to do just real quick here is I'm going to go in here, do a quick pedal calibration, just to make sure different cars, uh, especially if you've done anything that might uh, result in a change in calibration, um, just get in the habit of doing it. Sometimes those settings just get a little bit off. So see, we're already down in 12th place here uh, with Mr. Brady doing a 50.6. So this is going to be attributed to a variety of factors, really just how smooth they were, how much speed they were able to pick up coming out of the pits. Uh, some people will actually sit there for a while, burn off a little bit of fuel. So again, um, play with that. Those are just some of the things you can do. So we are ready for our grid. Um, nothing else to change. You can go back in here one more time. You've got a pretty much two minutes, 14, 1, 12 degrees there. Nothing else to play with. Uh, everything else good. So let's go ahead and take the grid. Starting from the pit lane. Looks like we are behind someone from Texas. So I, I do have uh, two auxiliary screens here with my gauges as well as a relative display. This is 10 laps only, not a lot, uh, not a lot of strategy involved here. It's really, honestly, it's a good deal of luck.
Okay, it looks like we've got some. Looks like we've got a good uh, stream going here. That's all uh, we really want to do. Uh, one of the biggest problems I was having, honestly, when it comes to streaming is on a very fast track, uh, getting a lot of pixelation on the track itself. Um, I was trying to resolve that, and uh, hopefully that has been taken care of. So honestly, uh, it doesn't really matter too much where you qualify here. I've qualified on the front row, ended up in a massive wreck. I have qualified on the way back, uh, messed up in qualifying, that kind of thing, and ended up being wrecked. I've been in the middle, ended up being wrecked. And uh, well, anyway... Oh, well, was going to try to get that in, but did not. So, probably should have done that earlier. That's something I've actually uh, got the uh, coming um, little piece of hardware that I ordered. Probably will end up doing a review or something of it is a neat little USB key, uh, kind of an insert for a USB that can turn any keyboard, keypad, or whatever device that would normally just do uh, your typical Apple New Barrack stuff and make them macro keys. So I've uh, been looking for a device such as that that could uh, make it a little bit easier to do some of these uh, announcements and whatnot uh, before races. Since I literally have almost every button and whatnot assigned to something. So, at any rate, we are beginning to start here. We're going into turns three and four here at Daytona, and we've got 10 laps. Uh, we're going to be starting in second gear. First gear really doesn't do it for these guys, so... Uh, as always, we are going to try to tuck up behind number 11 here. Looks like they are a. Looks like they have their D class license, so. And already someone behind me. Looks like they had the better part of Valor there. All right, so there you go. Ugh. Basically just got punted to the back lane here. And so there we go, folks. Uh, basically... Another line just getting pushed out of the way. All right, folks. Well, I got a big problem now. We are actually going to have um, the problem of a very large pack of trucks uh, passing us. So hopefully, uh, unfortunately, I hate to say it, but I'm kind of hoping that the pack will uh, destroy itself. Which, judging by the number of cars that are currently now not moving on my display, it uh, looks like we're going to be doing some catch up here. So I currently don't see anyone. All right, so let's see. Lots of guys smoking. 
Lots of guys going into the pits. Let's see where we end up here. All right, well, there you go. We, we have now officially gained 10 spots. And if we can catch this guy coming out of the pits here, we might actually get some drafting going on and catch the rest of them. I'm now showing 12th position. All right, so now we just try to keep it clean. Uh, luckily, our little tap uh, into the infield there uh, was uneventful. Oh, it looks like more people are pitting. P5, really? <laughs> so we are now actually a lot higher than we were. They really did, in fact, wreck nearly the whole field. All right, so our best bet here let this guy catch up. So we're going to slow down just a hair. All right. Okay. All right, so here's where it gets tricky. Uh, do have a couple of small packs forming behind us. Feels like the car is a little loose. Good news, at least, is it doesn't seem like uh, we're getting gained on too quickly. A couple of packs back there. Seven of ten laps. We might make it in through the end here. Fifteen seconds before on um, fourth here. Guess we're catching on Palmer ahead of us. Okay, so we're trying to ride this line.
So we should be coming up on So we are catching on Palmer. Silver behind us is doing a good job of catching us. But I think he is in that bigger pack. So it's a lot due here to whether or not he can actually grab us off of the bigger pack or not. So we only lost a second per lap. We'll see what happens when we pass the start finish. This is the last lap coming up. Silva gained another second, but I don't know he's going to gain a whole five or six in one lap. So as long as the guy behind us doesn't spin us. Because he's definitely not... I'm not Okay, so there we go, people. There is a fairly successful pickup truck race at Daytona. So actually, the guy that, well... Number 14 was actually 13th place. All right. Well, there you go. That uh, is what I call a pretty successful race. Uh, started way down the pack in 12th. No worries. So let's kind of go back to the beginning there. Like I said, we did end up in fifth place, having started, in fact, 13th on the grid. So that's what I would call a pretty successful run. Let's go back to the beginning here. All right, so let's come on. Lap one, lap two. That's my qualifying laps. And so... All right, getting ready to start. And so there we go. Fight number three car there. So this is a good indicator of, of trying to stay low. So obviously, once again, here we go. We got number three car giving me the push. Really not a lot of choice there. Now we got, uh, wow, it's Attack of the Pink Trucks, folks. There we go. So once again, let's see if I drifted down on him. Because I, I was hearing that I was clear. But, you know, it's one of those things. So... See, that's kind of one of those things where I'm trying to come down and it's like, I'm not going to let up at all. You know, as far as I'm concerned, I was coming down and trying to work my way in front of him and it was just, I'm not going to let up. So there you go. There's a nice little spin. Let's see. Who, who are we talking about here? Who actually did the spinning on me? So number three. So number four at that point in time was Mr. Gatz, car number four. Uh, number three was Amanda Buckingham. Oh, that's something you don't see every day. But, all right. Well, doesn't matter. Guy or girl. Still got a little too pushy. Where did car number three end up in the results? Well, 
Well, she ended up being 12th, a lap down. Uh, so let's uh, let's just follow this on around. Let's see where she ended up with the rest of this. So let's see. It gives me a little nudge, pushes me out of the way. No apologies there. All right. Oh. Still going around, going around, going around, and let's see, her and the number four car, and there's like yet another pinkish car. Holy cow, the pink car night. Number 33. They're coming around to where that big wreck ended up being, and oh, there she goes again. I mean, it's... All right, well, she hit the brakes, got tapped, and wow, I'm guessing I'm pretty glad I wasn't in front of that. So there you go. Looks like she got caught up in the mess. So And then, of course, me, I am now, I'm still in 23rd, and I'm still coming around, and I will end up being <laughs> 10 places ahead by the end of that. So... What goes around comes around, literally, in this case. So, at any rate, I think it was a pretty decent race. Just goes to show that uh, depending on the exact outcome, if you can, especially if you can avoid uh, damage in one of these races, uh, it is certainly possible to work your way back to the front being, um, being tricky with the strategy. Uh, most importantly here is you will notice that uh, even though I was going, I did in fact um, let up. And by letting up and ultimately allowing that truck right there to catch up with me, uh, being able to form a small pack and do getting the draft going, that is what allowed me to stay uh, up there because I think if you'll notice, here we go a few laps ahead. So like if you look at going up to lap, say, lap eight. All right, so now this guy has been drafting me. We're going... Almost to begin, the person in sixth place is actually Raphael Silver. And, oh my goodness, that is a very interesting truck design, whatever. Uh, but if you look at the way he is here, he's at the front of another two-man pack. If I had stayed by myself... He would have caught me. Uh, absolutely, positively would have caught me. There's no no way he would not. I mean, he is what? on? Where's he at here? He is on the back stretch. Oh, he just passed the pit entrance. And I am... I am at the pit exit, so you can see it was not that big of a change. Uh, and so, very crucial if you get into a wreck, you get separated. Try to find a car that you can that you can team up with or pack of cars. Um, get that draft going. Otherwise, you are just going to be caught very quickly by the by the pack or any packs. Especially if someone who's behind you is trying to catch you, you're, you're, you're going to be caught. But with that, I'm going to call that one uh, getting ready to do some practice for some of the series that I need to get done uh, before the weekend is over. Uh, since I haven't run any of them. I've uh, been doing a lot of practicing in the various series. So hopefully we'll get those done. And very shortly we'll be doing another race here for you tonight so again happy new year thanks for watching uh, of course uh, if you're so inclined like subscribe and as always here's the in card
Hey guys, Michael here. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, go ahead and click that like button. Click on the Planet Herring logo to subscribe to the channel. Let us know what you think about the video in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon.